is our number one priority. It's a beautiful day for a wedding, isn't it? I just know you and Sarah will be... You must be Sarah's partner. Where is she? I'd prefer to wait to speak and... It certainly was nice of you to think of me when sending invitations to my daughter's wedding. It's good to see you too, Mum. I just wish you would have given me more notice. Or maybe some time to get to know your dear partner. I barely even know his name. Oh? She probably warned you about me, hmm? What to say, what not to say, that sort of thing. I hope you realize I'm not as bad as she makes me out to be. I did nothing of the sort. Just a little talk about Dad and how you and I don't speak much. I promise you, that's all. Anyway, I'm sorry, Mum. I know how this must all seem to you. This was a sudden decision, and we didn't want to waste any more time. We wanted to keep the ceremony small, and involve only the people I care about the most. Sarah, dear. I hope you know that I am delighted to be here, to see you finally get married. It's been a long time coming, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you for coming, Mum. We'll be sure to talk more in a bit. But for now, let's not keep poor Raja waiting. We're waiting until everyone arrives. It's so lovely to see you, Sarah. It's wonderful to see you too, Aja. This is the one I told you about. I've heard a lot about you. All of it good. You're quite a catch. Ten seconds in and already you're embarrassing everyone. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that you are right for Sarah. She's quite special, hmm? Oh, God. Now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> That's called love, my dear. You better get used to it. Well, I've seen enough. I can read people the moment I lay eyes on them. And you, you're going to make Sarah quite happy. Coming from you, Aja, that means a lot. Of course, Sarah. You know I always look out for you. Now, are we ready to begin the ceremony? Very well. If everyone's ready, then I'll begin. It's been years since Sarah Morgan and I have spoken. And though it might appear that we've grown apart, I feel that we've become closer friends than ever before. When I received the message with Sarah's intent to marry, and that she wanted me to officiate the ceremony, <laughs> I was overwhelmed with joy. Not because she had decided to rekindle our friendship, but because she was allowing me to share the happiest moment of her life. I can't imagine a greater honor. And for that, Sarah, I thank you. I wouldn't have had it any other way, Aja. Before you present your vows, I'd ask both of you to remember that love is what brought you together today. It is a foundation upon which a structure of trust, faith, and affirmation is built. 
This structure can be absolutely impenetrable if you both agree to love each other unconditionally with faith, devotion, and acceptance. And most importantly, to allow yourself to be loved. Remember, there are no other bonds more meaningful than the one you are undertaking today. You should cherish this moment and hold it close to your hearts as a reminder of the love you share. If you both are willing to abide by these words, then you can be assured that your lives will be filled with joy and happiness forever. That was beautiful, Asha. Thank you. Did you need a moment, Sarah? No. No, I'm fine. But I wanted to say something before you continue. When we stood beside that waterfall in New Atlantis, you told me that I deserve to be with someone who understands my feelings. It was at that very moment I realized I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. Your love means everything to me. And I swear to return that love freely and unconditionally without hesitation. This is my solemn pledge to you. From deep within my heart, from deep within my soul, for all eternity. And you? Did you have anything you wanted to say to Sarah? I know it will. I'm going to hold you to that promise. You had a gift, Sarah? Yes. I wanted you to have this as a token of our love. I'm giving this to you as a symbol of the clean break I've made from my past. Oh, it would have been impossible without your help. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. With these promises of affection, and these vows you've exchanged by the power vested in me by the articles of constellation i happily pronounce you life mates congratulations aja i don't know what to say that was oh, amazing <laughs> i couldn't imagine having the ceremony without you i'm glad everything worked out for you sara I'm only sorry that we waited so long to reach out and contact one another. You better. Otherwise, I'd have to come out of retirement and hunt you down. <laughs> well, you're both welcome to stay here for as long as you like. Sarah, your mother will be staying here with me for a few weeks. We've actually got a lot more in common than I expected. So, I guess this is... I'll never forget. You will so deserve ready. someone special in I her life. I was so happy to officiate for you. I'm glad she found you. You and my Sarah are such a lovely couple. Oh, gosh, really. Uh, we're doing this, are we? Oh, can I? When Sarah was six... I believe. 
She lost her second tooth, but this time she actually lost it. I forget how it happened exactly, but it ended up going out with the waste as we were flying between Jemison and... Oh, I forget where. It's not important. She was so distraught. Mummy, what if the tooth fairy doesn't know I lost a tooth and doesn't come? <laughs> she cried. So I told her to write a note and leave it under her pillow for the tooth fairy. So she ended up explaining what had happened and begged the tooth fairy for a spaceship so she could go off and find her lost tooth for her. <laughs> it was adorable. Thanks, Mother. Just... Uh, thanks for that. It was... not quite what I had imagined for Sarah. I thought it would be a grand affair with hundreds of friends and extended family gathered to celebrate. But, given her history... I should say I'm not entirely surprised she chose something completely different. <laughs> However... Despite that, I must say that this was truly something special. It was quite splendid. Just the two of you, myself, and Aja, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again for having me. Mostly the physical distance between us. It wasn't intentional, I'll have you know. Our lives simply diverged as she grew older. You may not know this, but we had different plans for her when she was growing up. I've since come to terms and accepted that she didn't want to follow in her parents' footsteps. Perhaps... Hmm. She needs to hear it from me. I need to make it more clear to her that I'm proud of her, regardless of her choices. I need to, if I want to be closer to my daughter and her new partner. I guess we're done for now. I really do hope you're truly the one for my daughter. Don't. I'm happy to host up. I was chair of Constellation for 35 years. I was there for all the low points and all the high. I kept Constellation out of the colony war, made some incredible discoveries, and recruited some of the most amazing explorers in the settled systems. I just finally reached a point where I felt I'd done enough. And it was time to give Saba a chance. And I have no regrets either. If you're expecting controversy or some sort of political reason, I can assure you, it doesn't exist. And between you and me, I'm not getting any younger, eh? <laughs> and this tired old woman wanted to enjoy the sunset of her life on this beautiful world. You have to ask? Look at the place. It's absolute paradise. I can spend my day at the beach, relax with a cool drink and get up on some reading, enjoy the cuisine, whatever my heart desires. I haven't even traveled off world since I arrived. Hell, 
I haven't even boarded a spacecraft. It's so wonderfully liberating. Moving to Paradiso was... <laughs> she was a royal pain in the butt. That what she was, hmm? Hot-headed, impulsive, eager to rush into things without examining the ramifications, eh? Honestly, a lot like I was at her age. <laughs> Her hunger to explore the void was the most fervent I'd seen in my years at Constellation. There wasn't a single assignment she'd refuse. All in all, though, she was one of the best explorers I've traveled with. And I'd wager that holds true up to today. That woman has a good head on her shoulders. You should count yourself lucky to be a part of her life. Oh dear, did I say something wrong? Say ka. It was a wonderful wedding. I was so happy to officiate for you. You and my Sarah well, are such a well. lovely couple. Back for more, eh? Marrying you was the single best decision I've made in my entire life. Whatever it is, just tell me. If it keeps us close, then I'll gladly say those words every time you ask. I'm happy to host Abigail here at my home. She's quite charming. And maybe Paragon will My pleasure to make your stay as a surely I can do something for you. Ah, it would how long would you like? Thank you for booking your vacation. I wish I had booked a stay for longer. We've got some of the best private security in the settled system. I wish all of our moments together could last forever.
What's happening, darling? Stay safe, darling. Got anything on your scanner? Everything here is a little more expensive. Yet another nice day in Paradiso. Whatever you need, you got it. Bye, love.
again. Anything I can help you with, Captain? Lay it on me. Oh, right, right. You need something? It's ready. Get it stuck. Get it stuck. Orbit locked. Ooh, will you just look at that?
cycling airlock. Hope you're having a pleasant day. One of these days. about seeing stars <laughs> that was amazing Every day's nice around here. Your safety is our number one priority. Prime target for pirates, but they know to stay away for the most part. We 
try to stay out of our guests' way. But we're always here if needed. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sugiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something? Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. That matches our experience with it as well. Since you've already tried to hail them, you may have to go straight to boarding the ship. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or what ever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him, and he'll have your pay. Good luck. to my crew position. We're clear. We're locking into orbit now. I'm here for you, my love. I thought you'd never ask. I... I hope it isn't something I... Welcome back. Come back soon. Anything I can help with? What's up? Need something?
What's on your mind? Finally. factor in the local gravity before doing that? Did you need my help with something? Hello. Yes? Finally, I've been waiting. You two go on. I... An interesting mix of act. Clearly you're not. You're obviously human, but how are you here? We didn't know any others left Earth. Their first contact with anyone. And you, like that. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. You thought you were the only ones? I am afraid you have been unaware of a great many things. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you.
I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200-year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Oh yes, of course. Where are my manners? Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DeCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. A constant is a peaceful oh, ship. Purposes. Don't change I do that. not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it to Now that we know what's insist. out there, things are going to be more interesting. Welcome to now. the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios. Climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. So, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. Just you can because our equipment entire generations old, have been born, lived, and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Just stay out of trouble. We've got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. So, here we are. I am both shocked and impressed that all of this is still functional. No matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Mm, difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times, and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a Brackenridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of 
diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? We suspect that our equipment is woefully obsolete compared to whatever you all have now. In all honesty, we never expected to need to communicate with anyone, so our comms aren't particularly robust. That limits our options. We even attempted communicating with lights and sounds, something we saw in an old movie, but I don't believe they picked up on it. If anything, it may have inadvertently alarmed them. We know there's a settlement on the planet below, meaning people were here before us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assume that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavor, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lacked the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. Yes, yes, of course. But we need to start from a firm position and state our goal. If need be, we can compromise, work out a mutually beneficial deal or some such, but initially I'd like you to be firm with them and convince them to leave the planet to us. Let me know how they respond, and we'll go from there. Now, now. It makes little sense to give up before you try. Hey, we were never trained to address threats. Never seen a ship like that.
Neither. We're our own private force. The Paradiso Group pays top dollar for top-notch security. And I dare say we're some of the best in the business. We have to be out here on the fringes of the settled systems. Something I can help you with? I hope you're still will- Something I can help you with? Ah, if it has a name, good. Then you're already familiar with the situation, I take it. Do you know what they want? Interesting. We obviously have no records of a colony ship claiming this planet. Whatever the case, you'll need to speak with Oliver Campbell. A CEO for the Paradiso Group. He's in charge of bring. I'll let him know you're on. I can see why this location was chosen for a resort. Very nice. I'm here to satisfy your needs. I hope your stay is a pleasant one. No major incidents in a while. Let's hope it stays that way. Welcome to Paradiso. I cannot recall ever having the time, let alone the funds, for a vacation someplace like this. Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? <laughs> what I could tell you would get me in a lot of trouble. Most of them are typical sea level execs. I doubt you even need to use your imagination for that. The ones that show up to work day to day at least. I swear, I've never even met some of them, because they chill at their own private secluded beach homes all the time. Anyway, be smart around Oliver. He's got a way of getting what he wants without you realizing it. And that's all I'll say. I can't speak for anyone else, but I've got a pretty high-pressure job working as the executive assistant to the Paradiso board. You can imagine, dealing with a team of execs, trying to manage all of their schedules and their other whims. But it pays well, and they give me a nice executive suite at the hotel to live in. So, it's not all bad. Free access to all the resort's amenities after work helps, too. People were a little freaked out around here, understandably. It looks so different, and it's so massive. We honestly thought we were under attack by an unknown entity. But then, nothing happened. It just stayed there. No one could communicate with it. Sure. I just feel that we should be focusing on the natural beauty of this planet, not our amenities. 
There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. The resort facilities are precisely what we bring to the table. Heck, <laughs> it's the only thing we've really got to offer. Ah, I don't want to risk us coming off as just another artificial, shady, trash fiddle dump like Neon. That's not who we are. We've got something special here. We should embrace that. Well, arm's right. Thank you. I... will make some time for you, but keep it quick, yeah? No, of course not. There's several more. We're just the ones who show up day to day. The others spend their time lazing on the beach or gallivanting off-world. Doesn't bother me, though. Less cooks in the kitchen means I get to make all the big decisions around here. Seems to be working out for us just fine. We, the Paradiso group, bought the rights to this planet years ago with the intent of turning it into the biggest and best resort in the universe. To that end, I'd say we've succeeded. As such, no other leisure enterprises may operate on the planet without renting land from us. But as you can see, none can afford such a deal. <laughs> Not quite. We just don't answer to the Free Star Collective or the United Colonies. Makes things easier. We don't pay any taxes. We don't need to follow their laws. All the benefits, none of the drawbacks. And no one minds, because half the politicians and other big shots love vacationing here. Works for everyone. I am. And you must be the diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke, but given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> Ah, we're being direct then. Good on you. <laughs> so, what do you know about this dodgy ship I'm hearing all about? Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not going to work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here, temporarily, but it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. We own this planet, they don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with, and how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. Thanks for the offer, but my answer is still no. Too much risk involved, and if it goes wrong, then the problem can quickly get out of hand. If they settle here, it'll be under our conditions, not theirs. Sorry. They'd be hard-pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that child as official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. Well, 
They'd be hard pressed to defend. We may be outside the city. I'm sorry, but. Ah, good on you. You want to see him? He's the best in the business. We'll coordinate up. They deserve a renewed chance to decide their own fates. That is the right thing to do. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso group, we appreciate your help. We don't want to compete with Neon. Bayou's ruthless. He'll do anything he can to eliminate the competition. We don't need that kind of trouble. That being said, I think there's a middle ground. Maybe you build up the beach fronts. We try to stay out of our guests' way, but we're always here if needed. Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? Time to leave this place behind. Red Apogee. Surrounded by stars and the vastness of space. Time to cycle the airlock. Careful waving that fancy gun around. You don't need to see what it can do. We got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. Just because our equipment's old, Sure is nice to know there are other people like you. The constant is a piece. Boy, am I glad you want some sort of out there, things are going to be more interesting. Wow, I... 
We were never trained to address threats coming from outside. These are exciting times. I do not envy the lives that have been made in these confined quarters. It's hard work keeping everyone happy in my little community, but I try my best. Careful waving that fancy gun around. You don't need to see what it can do. I've never seen a ship like yours before. much more to learn about now. I wonder what else is out there. Now that we know it's out there, things are gonna be more interesting. Just stay out of trouble. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work. Now that you're here, we didn't believe anyone would be out. Don't forget to tell of us in your travels. The constant is a peaceful show. Ships separated. Engaging drive. Smugglers always like to use Hope Tech ships to resemble legitimate transports. I wonder how the company feels about that. Got anything you need to offload? We're asking everyone to take care of any... Okay, no problem.
sure you can find something? Local security handles most problems here. I only get involved when it's something big. New face, huh? Got some business with me or just learning the lay of the land? That's so. Well, I hope I lived up to your expectations. Ranger Niakalu. I'm a Hopetown girl born and raised, so I know a lot of the locals. That being said, keeping the peace around here... Likewise. Think of it as a small picture, big picture proposition. The small picture is local trouble, things that happen here in Hopetown. Handling that is local security's job. We rangers protect the entire Freestar Collective. So we deal with problems that span multiple worlds. Smuggling rings, escaped convicts, pirates preying on shipping. Those are the kind of things we handle. That's why there are rangers stationed in different settlements. It lets us cast a wide net. Not usually. Local security handles most of their issues. Every once in a while, though, we need access to sensitive information. Badge or not, some folks aren't fond of letting us poke around in their books and personnel files. Honestly, though, it's not that common. Most people are willing to work with us because they know it's in everyone's best interest. Bye. I don't want to hear it. Keep an eye on your valuables. You can't protect your own. You don't belong here. Desperate here. This is such a luxury. A fair amount of business I'll runs down through the town. And Deep from breath. What I understand, most of it is legal. <sighs> oh God. Right. Right. When I signed on to be a freight captain, I was expecting long hours and dull routes. And now I'm a hair away from being executed. Or worse. Where to start? So, I fly a rust bucket called the Markab for a small shipping line. Just started, really. We do bulk shipping, boring stuff like actuators and seed stock and minerals. Have you ever had a standard, boring job just blow up in your face? <laughs> you get it then. So, I just got assigned to the Markov. The first shipment? Slag steel. Nothing special. As soon as I left Neon and got scanned, things got crazy. Spacers, Freestar security, the works. Everyone demanding I power down, hand over the contraband, or sometimes just firing first. I skipped the system, ditched the cargo, and have been running ever since.
gets even worse. A tracker just landed, and I just know he's hunting a bounty. Me. But the trick is, everyone knows the ship. But my info isn't in the database yet. All they got is my last name, Fahim. So if you go into the pit stop and claim your Captain Fahim of the Markab, maybe you can deal with the tracker? are the best. This slate has everything they know about me. It's not much. He's the one with the cowboy hat. Just stay safe. Thank you.